This video will guide you through how to use the Martin Audio subwoofer calculator. Martin Audio's Arc Delay spreadsheet makes the process of designing a subarray extremely simple, giving you the flexibility to build a broadside or combined broadside cardioid array using the Martin Audio subs in your inventory and the space at the site that you have available. If you need more information on subwoofer design, please visit our training page on the website. First, download the SubArc calculator from the Martin Audio website. Go to www.martin-audio.com. From the home page, click on Support and select Subwoofer Calculator. Click on Download and save the file to a suitable location on your hard drive. Open the spreadsheet and first select which subwoofers you'll be using from the drop down list. All of our current SX subwoofers are available from the diminutive single 10 inch SX110 all the way up to the twin 18 inch hybrid SXH218. You can also select the subs from the multicellular range, the MSX, DSX, and MLX. Whilst the powered subs, the SX118P and 218P, aren't specifically listed, for the purposes of the ARC calculation, their acoustic performance is identical to the non-powered equivalents, so select either the SX118 or SX218 from the drop-down if you intend to use one of the powered models. Next, select the orientation that you intend to use. This can be flat on the horizontal or landscape mode, or upright portrait mode, which might be a better option if you have a large quantity of subs and limited space along the front of a stage. Now type in the number of subwoofers that you intend to use in the array. This can be any number from 3 up to 48. Note that the effectiveness of the array is proportional to the quantity and spacing of subs. Don't expect precise horizontal control if, for example, you only have four subs spaced two metres apart. Once the array length extends over around 10 metres, you can expect very impressive results, giving increasingly accurate horizontal dispersion control the more subs you add and the longer the array length extends. Next, choose the target angle for the sub coverage. The illustration shows exactly how this relates to the array and is the horizontal coverage in degrees that you would like to achieve from the array. If you have an even number of subs, there will be a gap between the two innermost subs. Enter the distance between them in metres. Note that it is a measurement of the actual gap, not the distance between the centres of the subs. The calculation allows for the dimension of the sub-model selected and whether they are in landscape or portrait mode, which makes it far easier for you as you just have to measure the gap. If you have an odd number of subs, there will be a sub exactly in the centre, so this figure is zero, although the calculation ignores it anyway when an odd number of subs is entered. Now enter the gap in metres between subs spaced out from the centre sub or subs. The spacing should be equal between all subs in the array. Note that the closer the spacing, the wider the frequency range that the array can control. If you would like to build a combined broadside and cardioid array, enter the cardioid delay for your chosen sub from the table to the right. The design information box shows some useful parameters of the array you have created. The total array length is shown, which is useful to check against the stage dimensions at the venue or site to ensure that there is sufficient room. The upper frequency limit at which the array will function is displayed. As mentioned, this is calculated using the spacing between subs. The acoustic centre spacing in metres between each sub is also displayed. The full details for your subarray are displayed in the Data Output section in three rows. 
The top row shows the spacing of the acoustic centres between each sub in metres. If you have an odd number of subs, the first figure will be zero. The next line has the delay in milliseconds that needs to be applied to each sub. If you have an odd number of subs, the first figure for the centre sub will be zero. Sub 1 shows the delay required for both subs either side of the centre. Sub 2, the subs on the outside of those, and so on. The delay must be the same for each corresponding position left and right. The table will display as many delays as are required for the quantity of subs you have entered, half the total quantity. The third row shows the total delay that needs to be applied to the reverse facing subs on top of the array for cardioid operation. Our recommendation for cardioid arrays is a ratio of 2 to 1, one facing backward for every two facing forward. So whilst cardioid values are shown for every sub position, you can choose to use half of these. For example, placing a rear facing sub on the centre, then positions 2, 4, 6 and so on, missing out 1, 3, 5 etc. You can of course use a ratio of your choice if you don't require as much attenuation behind the array in favour of more output out front. Don't forget that all backwards facing cardioid subs need their phase reversed and appropriate EQ applied.